Okay, so here's some advice regarding the HNC Mechanical Engineering Programme. I just want to briefly talk about the units, the order of the units that we prefer you to navigate through, and some study tips as well. Okay, so the units themselves. So for all of the five HNC programmes that we offer at Unicourse, they all have these four, what we call, mandatory core units. So you have to do them, essentially. Not in this order, we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, so engineering, design, maths and science. Project, that'll be at the end. They are a must, you have to do those. Now then, here we're talking about the HNC mechanical engineering. So for this particular specialist route, you have specialist mandatory uh, modules. And here we have two mechanical principles, which, which is to be expected on a mechanical uh, HNC. And thermodynamics, because that's all about heat and um, heat engines, heat transfer, um, fluids, all sorts of things like that. Well, they are classed as mechanical topics. Therefore, you can then do two of 20 plus optional units. So you have a large menu um, of modules to choose from after you've done your six mandatory units on this HNC mechanical engineering. Okay, let's have a look at where to start. Well, as expected, we start with the maths because the maths underpins lots of things, especially in mechanical engineering, which can be a little bit mathematical, um, but enjoyable at the same time. Okay, uh, the maths will then underpin some of the engineering science that you will do. Um, so to do the maths first, then the science, then you're pretty much ready to tackle the mechanical principles specialist unit and then you do the other specialist unit the thermodynamics then we're going to hit a level four option then another level four option do not even think about level four options at this point before you start your program at least go through these four units here then have a think about your options because you're going to be much better informed at this point because you've had that experience of those modules much better informed than you were at this point where you're just thinking about joining the program and you haven't really got all this knowledge okay so make informed choices that's what we're saying so you go through those six then you're in a good position to produce a really good design and finally produce a really good project okay hopefully that's just makes sense really it's just common sense all of that some study tips for you uh, let's have a look at the workbooks Right, so the, we, we write the workbooks here in-house. Uh, they're written in a certain way for lots of good reasons, which is to gain you your qualification as quickly as possible, but also give you the information that you need um, to become a good engineer after you receive your diploma. Okay, um, please pay particular attention to the worked examples which are in the workbooks because quite often they reflect the type of question that you may see on the assignments. Okay, let's have a look at the modules. Well, whichever modules you're doing, please just do one module at a time. Keep your focus on the topic area in hand and don't go off on a tangent thinking about other things. Okay, one module at a time. It's m far more effective for you. Assignments. Um, you can only submit one assignment at a time. You might try to submit three, but the, the admin team, the, the guys on the admin and the marketing team, they won't accept them from you anyway. Um, because we like you to have some information. For example, maths assignment one, you may have decided that. Uh, I didn't know I needed my calculator in that mode or that mode, radians mode or degrees mode, or I didn't realize I got an answer of 520 volts and I, I'm supposed to put the V at the end. Of course you are. Okay, it's 520 volts, not 520 rabbits or whatever. So you must use the correct SI units and 
as long as you do assignment one on maths for example and you may have been given that advice by the assessor at the end then you won't make the same mistakes on assignment two okay and a lot of this type of advice goes for many of the modules throughout the program okay so wait for feedback from your tutor before you submit anything else okay let's have a look at format here please hand write your assignments especially for maths and sciences if some some of the modules you know they require um, lots of written narrative and not many diagrams or some some not even any formulae um, you know okay I suppose to word process those because uh, we like to check for originality um, and we do have software that does that for us by the way um, but certainly for maths and science we do strongly advise you to handwrite the assignments we can look in the margin we can have a look for little drawings and notes and sketches and little asides that you may have done as I used to call them at, at university um, all this information is good for an assessor uh, to take account of uh, when determining your grade um, just because you may get an answer wrong at the end if you've got a fantastic method but you made a really silly error at the end then that's going to be ignored and you're going to get the marks okay so that's a good reason uh, to certainly handwrite maths and science units okay drafts well on engineering um, we do not accept drafts I'm afraid um, usually less than 5% of our students will submit a draft and say to Mike or one of the other teachers and colleagues is this worth a distinction or no, we can't give you that sort of advice unfortunately what we do is we, when you submit it then we tell you whether you get distinction or not uh, okay and you're not allowed to upgrade uh, your grades on on these ad excel programs so if you get a merit and it's been marked officially and come back to you then you cannot upgrade it to no matter how much additional evidence you provide you can't upgrade to a distinction uh, for that particular assignment the ed excel rule right so we can't confirm answers not even you know on a single question basis we can't even do that what we can do is we can discuss with you general principles which you may not have grasped fully um, and we're always there to do that for you um, seven days a week either in the office or at weekends we've been providing this service now for almost six years uh, weekends included uh, even bank holidays okay so we're always there for you um, but we can't do the assignments for you that's all I'm saying really okay Finally, if you're rusty at maths, then lots of our students have come onto the HNC program and said how good the interactive bridging maths course is that we developed. Uh, it is interactive, there's multiple choices, moving things around on screen. Uh, there's lots of videos, and I think there are 19 video tutorials on the bridging maths course and it has proved really really popular so have a look on the website and you'll see the syllabus for the bridging maths if those topics within that syllabus look a bit sort of grainy and um, distant to you then you may like to revise on your own but you, you probably best advised to jump onto our bridging maths course before you um, hit the HNC um, let's see everybody's different with different backgrounds okay so that's all i want to talk about really on hnc mechanical engineering so let's see how it goes thank you